got me jumping in my seat, man. I gotta get up and dance. Hey. Look at our feature animal of the day. Yes. Oh, it's our buddy, the seahorse. Woohoo! Yeah. That's a pretty cool looking seahorse, I'd have to say. He looks kind of sad, though. Oh, you are sad. Oh, so sorry to hear that, my friend. My goodness. Well, hey, my friends, it's time to go ahead and get started with another review video. That's right, chapter 11. We're doing a review video for the test. Let's go ahead and get started. Number one says that Fran drew a triangle with no congruent sides and one right angle. Which term accurately describes the triangle? It says mark all that apply. Now, you know, they put mark all that apply because, well, there could be more than one right answer. Welcome to the Common Core. That's right. So it's not just one. Well, let's take a look. Let me think about what we do know. Now, some of these problems on this particular um, chapter uh, don't seem to apply to all of the fifth grade Common Core standards. I'm going to do the entire video, but uh, some of these questions may not apply with the content. And this number one, I believe, is the case. But we'll get started. Anyway, I, I know a couple things. A one right angle, a right angle has 90 degrees. Therefore, if you've got a triangle with a right angle, you have a right triangle. So I would definitely say right has got to be one of the answers. So I'm going to go ahead and color in that one. Yes, bubbling. Oh, how I love that. So much fun. And then is there anything, anything else? Okay. Well, we have isosceles. Isosceles, if I recall, I believe they have two congruent sides. Scaling has no congruent sides. Scaling is that triangle that has three sides, which means the angles can't be congruent. The sides aren't congruent. And that's what this problem says here. So I'm going to have to go ahead and go with scaling as well. Acute can't be acute. Acute is less than 90 degrees. It has one right angle, which is exactly 90 degrees, so it can't be acute. Let's move on. Number two, Jose stores his baseball cards in a box like the one shown. Okay. It says use the numbers and symbols on the tiles to write a formula that represents the volume of the box. Symbols may be used more than once or not at all. <laughs> I love that little disclaimer they put on there. Okay, well, if we're talking about the formula for volume, it's kind of nice you get the first one right away. Volume, V. So volume is going to equal, well, I happen to know that volume is equal to length times width times height. However, that's not what they want here. I don't have those tiles as an example, so I'm just, just going to rewrite it. I just want to make sure I know I have my formula. Well, I do have 8 inches as my length. So I'm going to say volume is going to equal, in this case, 8. And it's going to be times, because we're multiplying, the width, which is 10, times 3, which is the height. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah! I think I got it. What do you think? What is the volume of the box? Oh, no, I have to do the math. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 8 times 3, that's right. Simple, simple, basic facts, 24 with my power of 10. Give me 240 cubic inches. Okay. I think we can move on. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Mr. Delgado sees this sign while he is driving. For numbers 3A through 3B, choose the values and term that correctly describes the shape Mr. Delgado saw. Okay. What well, says the figure has how many sides? Okay, I think we can see that. Pretty obvious. My goodness, three. I think a little caveman could do this one. Uh, it has how many vertices? Also has three. Because a vertex is this right here. And plural for vertex is vertices. Vertices. My goodness, this is so easy. Mr. War, you're going to do this video in like 10 minutes. And I'm thinking, for once, you may just be right. Let's find out. 3B says all of the sides are congruent. Keep in mind that congruent means equal. That's right. Equal. And so the figure is 
Not a polygon, a regular polygon, not a regular polygon. <laughs> okay, when you have, first of all, if all sides are congruent, then I'm going to assume that it has to be a polygon. A polygon is a figure with line segments that connect together. can't have uh, curved lines. But so that I'm just going to rule out. And now I have a regular polygon and non-regular polygon. The difference between a regular polygon and a non-regular polygon is basically whether or not the sides are congruent. A regular polygon, you guessed it, all the sides are congruent. That is my final answer. And you are out of there. And we have already finished page one. I love it. Next page. Page two. Uh-oh, it's getting hard now. Now, what is this? What is the volume of the composite figure? My goodness, look at that thing. Look at all of those dimensions. Okay, we definitely need to zoom in on this one. Okay, let's take a closer look. Well, we have a lot of different dimensions here. We need to make sure that we have this down. First of all, I am going to show you the length of the very, we have three rectangular prisms. You can see the one in the bottom, the one sitting above the one there on the bottom, and the very, the smaller one up on the very top, look like steps. And the one in the bottom, you can see the length right in the front is six feet. Now the width, what I want you guys to see is really important, is the width is three feet. But I want you to notice something, that all of these edges are three feet. See how I showed you that they're all equal. And they have to be equal because what we have here is rectangular prisms. And one important factor about a rectangular prism is that they all have right angles. You know, rectangle, hmm, remember? Yeah, do you recall that day? Yeah, when Mr. Warrior was going blah, 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 blah. And then he said, don't forget, regular, I mean, uh, rectangular prisms they all have right angles, and if they have right angles, that means the opposite sides have to be equal, like a rectangle. So these are all equal. And then, of course, we have, it's showing us the one foot with the little bracket, showing us that the height of each one of those is one foot. It also shows us the height from the very bottom to the very top being three feet. And that makes sense because each one of those. So it looks like every single one of these rectangular prisms has the same height. Now that I've given you all this information, now it's asking us what the volume is. So this is how I would figure out the volume. Let's just, let's come over here. Camera guy, you need to move over to the right. Thank you. Okay, so now we have six feet, so we're going to write volume three times because we're going to have three rectangular prisms. The very top one, again, length times width times height. So I'm going to take six times three times 1. That's equal to 18. And don't forget, that's going to be feet cubed. So we come here to the next one, and we don't have 6 feet. Oh, but it doesn't give us the dimension, so we have to do some subtracting. Because if the length is 6 feet going all the way across, if you go up to the next step, it's letting you know that that's 2 feet. So that makes it a little bit convenient. 2, 4, 6. They made this one very easy for us to solve. So we're going to take off two feet, which means the next one's going to be four feet. And four feet then is going to get multiplied by that same number three and the same number for the height. So that's going to be 12 feet cubed. My goodness, this is easy peasy lemon squeezy, my friends. And then finally we have the very top, which is going to be just two feet times, of course, still three feet is the width. The height is one foot. We end up with six feet cubed, giving us a grand total of 18 here. I see another 18 double is 36 feet cubed. Do I say that's my final answer? I say yes, my final answer. Oh, except I just now realized I put the unit of measure in there and they already put that in there for me. All right, I think I can live with that. Okay, so let's look at the next problem where it says number, it's just actually problem number five. It says match the figure with the number of unit cubes that would be needed to build each figure. Not every number of unit cubes will be used. Well, my friends, this is pretty standard because, you know, we could just count the cubes, but we could use some strategies. The top one there looks like if it were full, it'd be a lot easier 
to just subtract the two that are missing. So I'm going to say that there's six here on the bottom because I have three here in the front. And there has to be another three in the back over here because I have three on top. So if that were to be full, then that means I'd have six on a layer. Two layers would be 12. If I subtract two, that would be 10. I like it. So I'm going to go with 10 unit cubes. Let me draw a line to my 10. There we go. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then the next one, look at We have exactly what I said on that one there. Well, that's 12. Okay. Could they make these any easier? I don't know. And then finally here, uh, looks like a cute little tower here. What it looks like we have five on the bottom, then three, then one. Well, five plus three is eight, plus one is nine. Oh my goodness, yes. Even a little cave boy could do this one. Oh my goodness, what's this? Oh, it's the attack of the seahorses. Oh, I'm just kidding. You guys wouldn't attack. What are you all doing down here anyway? <laughs> oh, really? Oh, you don't want to leave the video. Oh, because you know when I get to the end of the video that you're no longer going to be a star. And <laughs> so you called your friends and thought, okay, safety in numbers, you know, let's be like the zebras. Ah, uh, well, okay, that's really cool. But the problem is you're blocking my problem. So I'm going to have to do something about that. Yeah, maybe I'll let you stay, but we'll shrink you. Okay. Do you like that? Shrinky, shrink, shrink. You're shrinking. Okay. And move maybe off to the side. I don't know if we can keep you here or not. I'm not sure we can keep you here. I don't know if we have room for you. Let's see. Okay, let's take a look at number six now. Chuck is making a poster about polyhedrons for his math class. He will draw figures and organize them in different sections of the poster. Okay. Part A. Chuck wants to draw three-dimensional figures whose lateral faces are rectangles. He says he can draw prisms and pyramids. Do you agree? Explain your answer. Hmm. Okay. Let's find out some facts that we do know. I'm going to say, no, I do not. I respectfully disagree with Chuck. And I think mostly because, you see, Chuck cannot draw pyramids because the lateral faces of a pyramid are triangles see not rectangles to have that rectangular to have lateral faces are rectangles you couldn't have a pyramid he can include prisms however on his poster since the lateral faces of prisons are rectangles so what does this really tell us well it lets us know that basically one significant difference attribute that's different from pyramids and uh, prisms is that shape, whether you have yourself triangles or whether you have yourself rectangles. So I'm going to go ahead and write some of that reasoning I just explained, and I'm going to put that in the box. Let's look at part B. Chuck says that he can draw a cylinder on his polyhedron poster because it has a pair of bases that are congruent. Is Chuck correct? Explain your reasoning. Well, it uses the word polyhedron, and if I recall, polyhedron, it's a, uh, a three-dimensional figure that actually has polygons, right, as its, um, as its lateral faces. So here, since he's talking about a cylinder, those are circles, therefore you wouldn't be able to, I would say, no, I don't agree with this one. I'd say the faces of a polyhedron are polygons. A cylinder is not a polyhedron because none of its surfaces are polygons. So it has two, you know, uh, circular bases and a curved surface, not making that a polygon. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and write those notes. Okie dokie, okay, seahorse, it's time to go. Can you hear that wonderful tango in the background? Maybe you guys want a tango, huh? I'm just kidding. Hey, my friends, it was a lot of fun. Now, live long and prosper.